Hey everybody, I'm Damien. And I'm Ed. And we are the creators of Living Dead Dolls. Tonight we wanted to talk to you about uh, Series 35, the 20th anniversary series. Uh, it's coming out this summer, and we wanted to show you what we have in store for you. What do we got here first? Eve. Eve. Well, first things we got to talk about is the new packaging. Yeah. Our old packaging, uh, the dolls had like uh, plastic bands around their hair to keep the hair down. Uh, they had like clear rubber bands to hold the dress down and twisty ties. But now with this new packaging, they are in a blister. Like, so we can keep their hair down so their hair is always like the correct shape. Before you had like dolls with like crazy hair and it, and it was matted down. People that had collected dolls uh, didn't take them out of the package. The hair was always matted. It never looked how the doll would look if it was out of the package. So now with this new blister packaging, the doll's gonna look exactly how it is meant to look. And it just slides right out. With the package, no twisty ties. And the doll comes out looking perfect. Which is and important, because I know a lot of the people who don't like to open them up, one of the issues was that the hair always had to be completely tied back, so you couldn't really see it at all. And the uh, death certificates and accessories are still taped taped behind. Um, you don't have the tissue paper anymore, no more of that getting ripped, it's just a, a red insert behind a blister. Still have the chip art though, everything else is the same. So Eve's chip art says, she gives freely forbidden apples injected with blood of the undead to create a race of starving zombies with an undying desire to be fed. Yeah, and Eve, obviously, like uh, Damien had said before, we thought this was more of a, uh, since it's our 20th anniversary, we'd go with more of a throwback um, type series. So the doll's a little bit more simplistic, um, but we wanted to make sure that they definitely you know, really captured the Living Dead doll feel. You know, that, that whole feel of uh, the creepy, cute, what's worked for us in the past. Yeah, um, Eve basically uh, is more of kind of like, we, we like to think of her sort of as almost Sadie's sister. You know, we wanted to go right back to that uh, early, early, early feel. Uh, she was originally made for an art show you know, at that point it was just a one-off, but we both enjoyed the way the doll came out, so as series went on, eventually we thought she might fit this series very, very, very well. So, yeah, I think, like, you know, with her sim even simplistic dress, uh, it, would, it kind of fits the, the whole series one kind of look that we originally started with, or even, you know, something out of series two, but she definitely fits uh, in the look, I think, of the earlier dolls we were creating. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if... Uh, up next, we have Legion. Her chip is... My name is Legion, for we are many. We have been around for the last 20. We are everywhere. We encompass all. We will forever be with you. We are living dead dog. The whole thought behind Legion is the, the quote... Uh, my name is Legion for We Are Many because it's kind of like, you know, our newsletter is the Living Dead Dolls Legionnaire. We kind of look at our fans as the Living Dead Doll Legions. So it's kind of like, we, you know, we're, we're a group, we're an, an army, you know, we're a mass of, of collectors, of friends, of family, you know. We all have our something in common with, uh, and that's uh, Living Dead Dolls. So Legion kind of encompensates the whole We Are Many kind of thing. Uh, her look is, she has like a, almost like a glittery, somewhat sparkled, uh, long blue overcoat with uh, black and blue uh, streaks in her hair and like a, a blue uh, velvet uh, shirt. I, uh, actually, it's like a, like a one piece underneath her coat. Um, her face is just kind of shadowed all around uh, her face, so it kind of gives it more of a, a, a thinned out look. And just like, and the white of her face pops more in the center with the, with the shading all around her hair. Um, again, she's kind of like uh, almost reminiscent of something I think that would come out of like series uh, two with like Lizzie Borden or, or something like that. Um, she has, you know, her, her menacing stare down eyes. Um, and uh, she's a, a, a really a big fan of this doll. I was pretty happy when she came out. Uh, 
She's definitely one of my more favorite dolls that have come out uh, in the last few years. I think she'd be up there. Yeah, it's funny how we tend to, uh, once we have a new series, those dolls tend to become our favorites. Hopefully they continue to become your favorites. All right, the next doll here is uh, Candy Rotten. For those fans that have been around from the beginning, you know she was one of our original handmaids. Um, she's been hard to seek out. Only a few people, only a few were ever really made. And so we thought this would be a really good one to bring aboard for this series and uh, to really show, you know, our roots and where we came from and, and that sort of thing. I'm going to let Damien read this. Uh, Candy Rotten's Chip says, Candy was so rotten she didn't belong, choosing those who screamed rather than sing a song. She woke one day and in her own land. Now she wants you with her down in Candy's land. Uh, Candy Rotten, I think, is, is is probably one of the last of the handmade characters that that never saw the light of day in any series before. So with uh, with Candy, uh, it was actually a tattoo artist in a tattoo shop that originally wanted to commission for a doll when we first started selling them. So she was really one of the, the very first dolls ever made. Uh, it's amazing she never made it into production, but it just, you know, until now, it wasn't in the card. She just didn't fit. But what she has here is, you know, she's got the really nice pink hair, the signature X on the forehead. Uh, she's got tattoos. On each forearm, we have sort of a dagger, and then on the chest, it's a sacred heart. But then, taking it one step further, she actually has pink cotton candy on one shoulder, blue on the other. I think she's a really cool character. I think there's a lot of people that are gonna, you know, really enjoy her. They've been waiting for a long time to get their hands on one, so now, is the time yeah it's definitely she's definitely an infamous doll that you know it's funny I think when we first started uh, making the dolls uh, by hand and we had we had you know the series one was basically based on almost uh, Posey Sin Sadie uh, Exorcist they were all handmade dolls and by the time we got the series two uh, instead of going back to looking at other handmade dolls we had we were just so excited to create all new characters and for each series, we just kind of like wanted to do new, do new, do new. And I think someone like Candy Rotten just kind of got pushed aside. And it came to a point where she just never fit into anything we were doing at the time with other series. And I think now it actually kind of worked out because with the 20th anniversary series, there's probably no more perfect doll to, to have in this series than Candy Rotten. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's uh, one of those things we've had. We've had requests come through from a lot of our fans wanting to know if or when we will uh, you know, ever release her. So here we have Galeris. She has a pretty somewhat interesting story named after a volcano. Very kind of summer vibe to her. Galeris's chip art is, Galeris is made of pure unholy fire. Her only purpose is to raise the flames higher. Not happy with simply watching all of you burn, but rather feeling your bones to ashes they turn. She's me. And as you can tell again, we have uh, more of a very basic uh, design. Um, the general feel and vibe is that of more desert type clothing uh, we wanted to really give the you know the summer uh, also volcanic vibe so if you look at the detail in the paint around the around the eyes and mouth I think it's something uh, that's a little different from things we've done in the past but again holds true to our original concepts and our early ideas which uh, definitely important for us in this series. And then the last doll we have is the mystery doll, which is, we, we can't show you what that is. You're going to have to wait <laughs> until you get the series to find out 
what's behind this black coffin lid. But we can say that within this set, there are five special dolls that I'm not gonna say what they are yet, but you'll know when you get one. And when you receive one, then you're in, you're in for a treat. These dolls, four dolls plus a mystery doll is what we have for the 20th anniversary series of Living Dead Dolls. So if anybody out there was wondering why maybe after 20 years we would go back to, to basics, now you have it. You have it straight from our mouths. We did it for the people who have been there from the beginning and also for our new fans who hopefully can now have a bit of that vibe since some of our earlier dolls have uh, really raised in price on the on the secondary market. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't about just strictly re-releasing uh, all characters we had done before, but rather giving our old and new fans something a little bit special. See you guys next time. <laughs>